Hi, my name is Chris and I'm one of the technicians at Ted Brown Music in Tacoma, Washington. Today I'm going to give you a few handy little repair tips that you can use in your band rooms, um, on the marching band field, or anywhere where there's an emergency. A couple of these are going to be permanent, most of these are going to be temporary. So let's get started. Uh, the first thing I'm going to talk about today is tenon corks. Most of the time when we think about tenon corks, we think about the joints on clarinets and how they fit together. Um, I've got three simple ways to do it. One is going to be a, a very emergency situation case. The next will be a semi-permanent case. And the final one will be the traditional way uh, using cork. So first of all, if you're on the marching band Aaron, field Aaron, and you just absolutely need to put a cork on a clarinet, uh, the best thing to do is grab a, a roll of electrician's tape. and it comes in lots of colors. It really sticks well to itself, but the nice thing is it doesn't stick super well to a band instrument. The worst thing that we can do is put tape like masking tape or Scotch brand tape or any of those on a clarinet or saxophone or anything else uh, because it could ruin the lacquer, it could leave lots of tape residue, or it could do other damage. So there's your tenon cork. And then you can put the bell back on, the barrel back on, the two joints together, and you're good to go for your performance. Your next option, which is going to be a little bit more permanent, may last a few weeks, may last a long, longer than that, uh, is to use a Valentino product. And this is a sticky back cork. So it looks like this. It's a little synthetic cork strip. Sticky back comes off the back. You take the cork and you just wrap it around. Now, in both of these cases with the tape and with the Valentino product, you really don't need much else. Um, you can trim it up a little bit with a razor blade. Uh, the Valentino, you can use scissors. You saw I just tore the tape apart with my hands. It's very simple. And then that sticky back will last, like I said, a few days, a few weeks, however long you need to get to a real repair technician. The traditional way is with cork. This is a um, sheet of... 364 tenon cork. Uh, it's about $40 a sheet, so it's something that you'll want to save for. Um, but it's really easy to use. You will need the cork, you'll need some contact cement, uh, you'll need a razor blade, and you'll need a straight edge. But it's very simple from there. Put the sheet of cork up against the clarinet, mark with a razor blade or a pen, where the end of the cork, or sorry, where the end of the tenon meets. So I've got a little shoulder here, a little shoulder here, and I want to fill that gap with the cork. So I've made a little mark. Then I'm going to take my razor blade and my straight edge and cut a piece off. This is the important part. I'm going to take one end and I'm going to cut a bevel with my razor blade. And I don't know if you can see that, but so it looks like that. Contact cement. Contact cement sticks to itself. It sticks to wood, it sticks to plastic. Doesn't stick to metal all that well, but it sticks okay. But it sticks to itself the best. And it works really, really well for tenon corks. And you can use this for neck corks. Um, as well. It's the same process. Let that dry for about five minutes. Contact cement needs to thoroughly dry on the surfaces that you put it on before you can stick things together. So this is what I'm going to do. On the back side, and this is traditional, I'm going to make my seam. So I'm going to start with my bevel and the point of the bevel goes on to the clarinet. If you're right-handed, you could go this way. If you're left-handed, you could go this way or whatever way is comfortable for you. So then I'm going to wrap and press my tenon cork around. And my contact cement is sticking to itself, so it's not gonna come back off. Take my razor blade or again, a box knife. Uh, scissors aren't so great in this situation and trim the little extra off. Save this because you can use this for bumpers on saxophone and clarinet keys. 
And then to make it fit, I can take a nail file and file it down a little bit, or I can take some heavy duty sandpaper, make a little loop and sand it that way. A little cork grease, and then I can fit the joints together. And this will last as long as any professionally done tenon cork, as long as you let the glue dry. Okay, you saw I talked about Valentino products. Um, we like to recommend Valentino products as an emergency sort of uh, product. Uh, it works really well for water keys. Um, you can use it for like clarinet pads or flute pads, the small little ones for the trill keys. Uh, they make products that fit inside of caps for valve instruments and for um, between the valve itself and the cap. So if you lose your felts, uh, you can use those. Um, they come in all kinds of different colors and different sizes. And we sell them as kits here at Ted Brown Music. Really, really handy in an emergency situation. So I always recommend having those around. Okay, next quick tip. Zip ties are your friend. This is a zip tie. Again, all kinds of shapes, all kinds of colors. Uh, you can get them in big bags, or you can get them in small bags or even individually. Um, but they're very handy. We talked about tape before. A long time ago, people would tape their instruments together. Once zip ties came out, this is the way to do it. This is a trumpet. Lots of times you'll get broken braces across the trumpet. You can take a zip tie and tie them together this way. Um, I showed you my water key before. My water key is broken, spring is broken, I can zip tie the water key shut. Same on woodwind instruments. If my closed keys are stuck open, I can zip tie them shut. These are great in emergency situations. I don't think you want it long term, but for the immediacy of going out on the marching band field and um, doing it, zip ties work great. This is how they work. They've got a little window on one end and usually a big block. They've got a skinny end that is plain, and then in between we've got lots of teeth. So you just take the skinny end, stick it through the big end, and it goes in from the flat side to the blocky side. And then you just pull it tight. If you need a long span, you can put two zip ties together, and you can tighten it up. I've seen trumpets put together and last for a full season with zip ties. You don't want to send your marching band trumpet in, zip tie it together for the season, and then send it in when you're done, and we'll fix it from there. So zip ties, very, very handy. Um, next thing, the most common repair that I see on tubas and on euphoniums is understanding how a plastic valve guide works. Over and over again, your students will play and fiddle with the finger buttons on those instruments, loosen everything up, and the valve guide will get wrong. Your instrument won't play. Because valves have to go in in a certain sequence and a certain rotation. So, I'm gonna show you the different parts of the piston and how this works together and how you simply can put them together. So, this is a piston. This is a valve guide. There's usually a little washer that fits on top of the valve guide, a stem, a felt, maybe one or two, and a valve cap. And then of course on top of that you've got your finger button. So this is how it works. Every valve has a little hole and has a big hole and has a number on it. Uh, I've marked my numbers so that I can read it easily, um, but it's usually uh, stamped into the top. So this is how this works. You take your piston, the valve guide has a little nub on it, and that little nub goes in the little hole. You want to be able to see the bigger of the two holes. And it doesn't matter what brand, this happens to be a Yamaha, this is a Jupiter, this is an Eastman. They all have a big hole and a little hole and a number. Then I'm going to put my washer on, my metal washer on. Carefully screw in my stem. 
and the stem holds everything together. Pro tip, when you're putting this all together, push the plastic guide into the center of the valve. That way it'll fit into almost any casing. Felts go on top of that. Cap. Finger button. The nice thing is, is when I've done this properly, I've got my stem, I've got my big hole, and I've got my number. So those are all prominent. Okay, last thing. One of the most common repairs we see uh, in band rooms is having to restring a French horn rotor. So today I'm gonna do it twice. First, I'm gonna do it in large scale so it's easy to see, and then I'm going to do it on a regular French horn. So I've got the different parts of the French horn here. This is the lever arm that comes down. This is the stop arm with the big stop arm screw in back. That's the big screw in the center that you're going to see. Right next to that, there's usually a little string screw. And then back here on the lever, there's also a string screw. Uh, the lever itself has two holes, one up here at the top and one down here by the string screw. And we're gonna thread our strings so that it goes properly around the rotor and through the right holes. So we start by tying a knot in the string and putting it through the lever. And we're going to go down and around the stop arm. And this is the really important part. We're gonna take the string and make a little loop so that it folds over the string screw. Because what we want is we want the string screw to be underneath to start with, and then the string to be over that incoming string on the way out. So that as I tighten my string screw, it tightens up and locks into place. Then I'm gonna go around my stop arm through the lower hole in my lever. And I'm gonna do that same fold again so that the string is underneath as it comes in and over the top as it goes out. Again, so when I tighten my string screw, everything tightens up and locks into place. Now, sometimes you'll see this over here with the lever and the stop arm and the screws, but you tie it exactly the same way. It's the same process. You wanna lock things into place. All right, so here's the real horn. Um, some things to note, there are all kinds of different kinds of strings. Uh, this is a Yamaha French horn, so I'm gonna use the traditional yellow French horn string from Yamaha. Uh, they also sell it in black. You see that a lot on Khan and King French horns. And this is just fishing line. Um, it's 50 weight, uh, so, it, but it's exactly the same thing. It's all a nylon Daycron string at the core and it's very strong. So I'm gonna do this in silence because it takes a lot of, uh, a lot of concentration, <laughs> if I can say the word. Um, but I'll start with my knot in the end of the string and hopefully you can follow. And there's my fold over loop. Tighten it down, around the top and through the hole. Another fold over loop. and then tighten it again, and then that should work. So thank you for watching my video today. I hope you got something out of it. Uh, can use one or two of those tips. Um, if you have any questions or like to get a hold of me, again, my name is Chris. I work at Ted Brown Music in Tacoma, Washington.